Welcome to episode 15 of our weekly video podcast. Following training, we had a chat with a difference involving Simon Spender and Blaine Hudson. We looked ahead to the Aberystwyth Town game, but also we diversified long journeys and dogs in there with the conversation. Enjoy. What memories do you have, first of all, Simon Spender, of playing the Seasiders? It's big, mate. Um... I think mine that stands out for me is I think it was the last time they were on grass and speak up so I think it was Greg that missed a chance from about two yards out and we lost no coincidence he just walked past but yeah that's the big one for me I think we lost 1-0 and he missed about 4 or 5 in that game I'm not saying it happens every week but but yeah that stands out for me well, when you said that just as you said Greg was here on the balcony with us moments ago, I thought he was there, ready to defend himself. Blaine, that was a low <clears> blow. <throat> Attacking one of our fellow players when he's not there to defend himself. He is full of low blows, aren't you, Simon? <laughs> aren't you? No. You are full of low blows, aren't you? Aren't you? You've got loads to say when it's not running. Now, now you've got nothing to say when the camera's on you. Shy. <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely spot on there, Blaine. Shall we put the, the spotlight back on you, Spence? No, no, I'll leave, Spence. Leave, Spence. Great person walk past. Before we switch the camera on, as Blaine said, you had plenty to say, but you seem to have gone very quiet now. No, no, no. He's, he's had a new dog, yeah. and I've told him, if he can't handle, I'll take it off him. You know, he's had a new... Why, what, was what, was what was it? Why bring him a dog up for? French bulldog. He's just bought a French bulldog. He's had it a few months. I haven't just he... bought a French bulldog. I've had it a few months. He's had it a few months. months okay, just but you're still it. training it. Which one is it? Have still... I had it a few months or have I just bought it? Which one? I don't know. He's still weaning. I get it and not pay for it. All I know is and he's weaning and pooing in the house every morning. It's not a and pee, so that's how much you know about it. I'll take it She's to She's not pooing house. in the house. She didn't listen to anything I said this morning then. I said I'm proud of her for not pooing in the house this morning. She didn't listen to anything that I'm saying. He's got a new home. I'll have it in a few months. You're not having it for £100 like you offered me, Simon. 200 I'm up to now. Right? Having 200 pounds. If it goes over a year not old. Having my dog. If it goes so over a year old. Why are we talking about the dog? Right, why are we talking about the dog? Private stuff, but right. we'll take the dog soon. So, so how much did this dog cost then? I don't want to talk about the dog, bro. <laughs> I want to talk about football. It was expensive. Let's stop talking about the dog. Yeah, let, let's let's talk about football, shall we? Aberystwyth, where you've been at the club now for a season plus. Obviously, they didn't make the top six last time round, so your experiences of them are quite limited. Uh, I didn't play any away game. I think I was injured. Was I injured? Usual, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was one of my six games that I missed last year. I didn't play in that one. I played at home. Don't really remember the game. Oh, we, we scored. We scored quite a few, didn't we? I think we scored a few. Didn't we go I don't. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I've told you about <laughs> saying stuff like that. I can't understand you. Um, I don't really have too many memories of the Rebs, to be honest. Can't really help you apart from the cup final, but that one against them. So. Of course, the cup final was at Park Avenue. Mm. That was a happy memory for you, of course. Mm. It's not a very nice drive, though, is it? Didn't enjoy the journey there, but it's a good, it's a good, um, it's a good one 0 win, wasn't it? Talking of drives and journeys, how important is it for you as players when we say travel to Kevin Druids, which is just up the road, or we go to Clanethley, Carmarthen, etc., quite a distance on the road? Um, I'm not really sure what you asked me there, Rev. I mean, like we like playing the short ones. We like we like playing the long ones. So you don't like playing long ones. You don't it's like always, it's always ones. better when you play here or somewhere oh, exactly. closer. That's the answer. I'm not a big fan of going on the bus for four hours. I get a bit sick, to be honest. So yeah, I don't travel well on the bus. So I prefer the local ones. You don't, you don't like being in little spaces. You like no. he likes where he can play and run around. Mm. Don't you so? With a dog. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't want to be in a kennel then, would you? No, no, no. Some, so, so some dogs it, are kept in kennels all day and, <laughs> no in the kitchen. Are kept, there's no dogs in And others are set free to roam the house. Who has a kennel in the kitchen? He's got a little no cup, dogs, he's, got, he's got a cup no where he keeps it. And no dogs are kept in kitchen. What's that got to do with a long journey? <laughs> How are you bringing that up? It's your fault for mentioning kennel, Rev. I don't, think, I don't think we should talk about a dog anymore. No, all he I'm, asked you was if you like long no, journeys or not. No, I don't like long journeys. I feel sick. There we go. I feel sick. They don't go down well with me. OK, well, Aberystwyth at home. On, on paper, a lot of people would say that would be one of the new Saints' easier games. But of course, as we know, no such thing as an easy game in reality. There's no such thing as an easy game, Web. Um, I think we, we need a reaction from the weekend and 
it's always good to play a couple of days after losing, so we just have to look forward to it and um, go and try and, and redeem ourselves a bit from, from the weekend. Obviously the game on Saturday wasn't the result that we wanted, but here we are looking forward to getting back into action on Tuesday. Some people could say a short gap is not the ideal preparation time, but the other way of looking at it, Spens, is that it gives us the opportunity to put the right, to put the wrong right immediately. That's you. Oh, me. <laughs> Blaine likes answers. You're so I thought he was going to go. Spence. Um, You're not here. Yeah, I think it's, we'll get back to the league now. Um, yeah, you said that. I know. Well, can you not hear him? Yeah. Uh, I think that's the main thing for us now is just concentrate on the league. Um, if we get a few wins in the next few months, then you know we're top now and we should stay there. So I think that's the big thing for us now. Concentrate on the league and Hopefully we need a good performance on Tuesday night. And again, the disappointment of a defeat in the Iron Brew Cup. A victory against Aberystwyth would, would dispel all of that doom and gloom that went with Saturday's game. Definitely, mate. And I'm looking forward to Friday night as well. Not being there before, so it's two challenges this week, which are different to the weekend, and hopefully we'll um, get them both. Two good wins, he's tired, right? <laughs> Do you want to snore? Do you no, want to snore no, louder no, so on, everyone mate. can hear? Do you want to snore without smiling? Do you want to answer Rev's questions properly or are you going to go back to talking about anything <laughs> else that's irrelevant to anything that we say? Huh? How good is he at this? Huh? Do, you on, to talk? Do you want to talk? No, I'm alright, I'm listening. Just go stop on. making go, noises go on, when you've not been asked to talk. Go on, on. finish, hurry up. So yeah, that's it, bro. So you're looking forward to the next two games, you are? Me and Spen. Well, Spen's is not looking forward to Friday because it's a long journey. True that. You said true that. Well, it's a cool thing to say. <laughs> you didn't even need me here, so he's answering everything. Waste of time me being here. The name Redmond, of course, is now familiar to TNS fans, but to Manchester City, Oldham Athletic and Bury supporters, the name Steve Redmond in particular will ring a bell or two. The father of our very own Danny. We had a chat with him recently here at Park Hall. Steve, Manchester City legend goes without saying. You played a lot of games for the club. You stayed in Lancashire though after yeah. that, Oldham and Bury. Yeah, um, I say it was that city. I was a uh, school boy at the age of 14. Signed, first, well, signed uh, 17 and signed pro. Um, 18, made my debut. Um, very lucky. Um, I could have had a couple of clubs going, I could have gone to Liverpool, Everton. Uh, obviously, my local clubs, but uh, at the time, Man City were uh, more youthful. Um, like Sir Tommy Cain was getting the game at the time. Uh, so that's why I chose Man City and last things. I never looked back really, just staying, I just stayed in the North West. And you've hung up your boots now, of course, yeah. but you follow your son, yeah. Danny. Now, yeah. when he was a little nipper, first started to crawl around, did yeah. you envisage then that one day he would follow in your footsteps? Um, well, obviously, you don't know at that age, but uh, I can honestly say, I mean, He's walking at eight months. Um, we give him a football, and he just never put it down. Um, and so since, since that day, he's just loved football. Um, I mean, I've, not, I've never put pressure on him to be a football. I mean, he does his own things inside of doing what he wants it to do. You know, we used to say he loves and breathes football. Same as myself, like so. Obviously, a ball him, yeah. And like youngsters these days, he got involved in academy football, yeah. and then of course he signed his first professional contract. That must have been a proud moment for you as a parent. Yeah, it was. I mean, I mean, he started off at Everton. He was, I think, he was six years of age at Everton, um, and then I think it was sixteen. He let him go. Um, I think it was that, was that was down to size, and that was football ability, which was quite annoying to be honest. I always think if you're good enough, you're big enough. But uh, obviously, that wasn't Everton at the time. Um, then you say he went to Wigan. Um, as you say, it's just great to get his first professional contract. As you say, he feels so proud, and he hope that things that work out for him. Which they have no problem to be, to be fair. He's played in England, Scotland, and now yeah. Wales. What did you know about Welsh football, Steve? Well, I was um, to someone earlier on about um, just going back quite a few years. My friend used to play for Rill, uh, and he was saying like you know the, the place to be, and that was going back a few years. He says TNS. He said the team not going to go places. He said they're the biggest club. He said they do well in Europe. Um, so he said, he, has to, he even asked me to go there at the end of the season, after my, my playing career, it's like 36 at the time. And he said, well, you can have a season or two in CNS, but I thought, no. So while, while I can walk away from football, no injuries, I'll walk away. But uh, I say, our oh, Dan's come in, and to be fair, we're both loving at the moment. 
Well, he certainly is loving his football. Yeah. He's fitted into the squad very well yeah. indeed. And you come and watch him when you can yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, things lead to the European games that I haven't been to, obviously away from home. But uh, the local games this season, the home games I've been to every once. So um, I'll be here again on Tuesday night. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Finally, a score prediction for today. Queen's Park. 3-0. 3-0 to TNS. Of course. I'll tell you what, we'll go with that one. Take Steve, that. thank you for your time today. Absolute very much pleasure. appreciated. No, very much pleasure. Simon Marsden is one of the directors of RUKgroup.com, our main club sponsors. He's off to Madagascar shortly with a bicycle. Anyway, we had a chat with him to find out more. Simon, you're a very keen cyclist and you're combining your love of the road with raising some money for charity. Tell us all about that. Um, started over a few beers about nine months ago with a, a, a good friend of mine, Mark Dutton, who unfortunately lost his mother when she was 50 to very aggressive uh, breast cancer. Mark was 50 this year and wanted to kind of honor his mum's memory uh, and do something to raise money for breast cancer research. Um, as I say, over a few beers, a mountain biking ride in Madagascar seemed like a good idea. As it gets closer and closer, I'm beginning to uh, regret the idea, but I'm looking forward to it. Well, you're well travelled, of course. With Manchester City, yeah. you go to the away games in Europe, but this is going to be a different journey altogether, yeah. never mind the cycling. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the, the actual challenge itself is organised by a company called Global Adventures Challenges, based in Chester. Uh, and we fly on the Friday the 27th or the 28th of September, we arrive, we fly through Ethiopia, through Addis Ababa, and we arrive in Antanaviro on the Saturday morning. We start cycling on the Sunday, and we finish on the Friday night. So we're cycling for six days, and it's approximately 400 kilometers of mountain biking. So it's uh, gonna be fairly tough. Yeah, Madagascar is very different to the Netherlands, so your <laughs> legs are going to be working overtime. Yeah, 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 very much so. We've been doing a lot of training. We did the Trans Pennine uh, a couple of weeks ago from Stockport over to Sheffield, which is it's bordering on 60 miles and 4,000 feet of climbing. So uh, that was the last big um, training ride um, before we actually go. We're all doing individual training anyway. I'm out most days on my bike at the moment. Uh, and out for longer runs at the weekend. Well, we were at Park Hall today. Did you come on your bike here? No, I didn't today, no, because I was down at the depot um, fairly early on and it's, uh, it would be quite an early start to get to the depot for seven. But back to the charity itself, of course there's a connection there with your friend and I guess while you're out there pushing those pedals in the heat and the humidity yeah. of Madagascar, every single turn of the wheel will be a reminder to you yeah, of right. not only how precious life is yeah. but also what you're personally doing to help those yeah. in this unfortunate situation. I think, I think in fairness to you, most people uh, unfortunately could name somebody that they know that has been affected by uh, any form of cancer. Any form of cancer is a, is a, is a dreadful disease and any breakthrough that they can make in, in treating one cancer has benefits for other cancers because the treatments are very similar and the, the you know the, the way forward is very similar um so yeah anything we, we did a raffle which was drawn a couple of fridays ago that's raised a fair amount of money but we have um, a bt giving page uh, which is called biking for a breast because there's actually four of us doing it mark's wife yvette uh, and mark's national sales manager debbie have both been kind of press ganged into it as well as Mark and I so um, as I say we're looking forward to it it's a tough challenge but uh, you know anybody that wants to donate if they have a look at the BT giving page biking for a breast please feel free and the more the merrier thank you well I was going to ask you how can people get behind it and as we're talking now yeah. on the screen as people are watching the address is there for them to get in touch that's brilliant thank you very much Stuart well finally Simon what started out as a venture discussed over a couple of beers. You're about to hit the road yeah. literally yeah. shortly. We do wish you all the very, very best from everyone at the New Saints. Thank you very much indeed.
I hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast. Don't forget, as always, check out our website, tnsfc.co.uk, for news, views and opinions from Park Hall, the home of the Champions of Wales. Thank you.